Now when we have our sentinel data pre-processed and ready for the analysis, let's have a look how we can create and manage our reference data that can be used for training and validation of our classification uh, tasks. So when using Earth Engine, we have several options how we can manage our reference data. It can be loaded as an asset uh, in case it was uh, created locally or it was um, uh, collected in the ground or it can be also interactively collected using the geometry imports tool. Let's have a simple example how this can be uh, done with the geometry imports tool. Uh, you will create a new layer and pin in some uh, point of interest and uh, what's important is to create it as a future collection and give it a property which will have the value of the um, class that it, the point represents so that can be uh, this property can be called class and for example here we can um, assume that uh, the urban areas have the value of one and the non-urban areas have values of zero and if you have my, much more classes these values can be um, created for them and you put a name so uh, this is the um, whole process, but of course when doing this interactively, you have to create enough uh, number of points for each class in order to have representative data set for each uh, class. Um, in our case for today, we will use a uh, um, prepared data set, um, which has around 1000 points with values of 0 in property class representing non-urban areas and values of 1 representing the urban areas. So, but now we will need this data to be split into two uh, separate parts in order to use a part of it for training our data set and the other part uh, only for validation. To do so, uh, we can add a random uh, column with a random number into our data set and use the va these values in order to split our data set. In our case, around 70% would be used only for training and around 30% uh, only for validation. Um, so first we will use our data in the training uh, partition in order to sample uh, the data. So basically what the, the sample regions tools will do will overlay this point uh, with the image and will create a new property for each point uh, with the values of uh, the bands that we have in our input data set. Um, of course, counting the properties of class, so doing so for urban and non-urban areas. Let's print the training data. We can see that we have uh, around 700 points and let's have a look at one of the features. We can see that it has several properties with all the bands that we have in our input, including the spectral indices and the class information. Um, and this, this information can be used in our classifier. In our case, we will use the random forest classifier, but here in the documentation, you can also see that there are several other options such as support vector machine or decision trees. In our case, we will use random forest and we will have um, 300, we will use 300 trees for the start. And you can see here for our input properties, we, for the first test, we will use just some, uh, some of the spectral bands uh, in our input. We will use this uh, classifier to classify our data set and let's map the results. So previously created vegetation mask can also help us to have some visual analysis of how good our classification is. We can see here as we have a binary um, output where the 
uh, non-urban areas are presented with white and uh, urban areas with value of one are presented with um, black, so the build-up areas. And we can see that uh, quite nicely the green areas, which were also delineated with, uh, with our um, thresholding example, are classified as uh, non-urban, so non-build-up areas. So here for quite nice validation, but of course this uh, these comparisons with NDVI or the base map are just uh, visual uh, interpretation, and uh, we need some um, more um, information regarding how accurate our results are. For this, we can use the 30% of our reference data that we didn't use in our training, and we can use this information in order to validate. The process is the same. First, we have to use the sampled regions in order to have in our feature, feature collection the properties regarding the values, band values for each point. And then we can use the same process and print the, in this case, using the validated uh, information, uh, we can uh, using the class which was in our input and the classification which is in our output to have the, the accuracy, testing accuracy and the confusion matrix. Take some time so we can see that we have quite accurate results, so around 89% of our data uh, is classified correctly. Of course, we can see there are some misclassifications which can be either um, um, solved and uh, to have a better classification either by changing the reference data uh, or uh, looking at the input of the data set. So here we can see that we are using only uh, some of the bands. Uh, if we add here the uh, NDVI and also the uh, normalized different buildup index. Let's have uh, let's have a look how the classification um, output and the accuracy metrics would change. So here we can see that there is a slight improvement of our results, but using um, much um, more than. Um, one indice and also including some other indices can help for improving the classification output. 